I'm glad that always to be able to come and bring the word of God to you guys. It's always a blessing, an honor to be able to share what God has put on my heart. Um, today I'm going to take you through a journey. Um, I like to, I, I, I wanted to do more, but I couldn't. But I want to just kind of give you a thought, just a little bit. Um, we're going to be like archaeologists today. And uh, y'all know what an archaeologist does, right? They're the ones that go and dig up stuff. Um, you know, they unearth and search for valuable things such as Native American relics and arrowheads, pottery. You know, even in this area and other areas, as I've been discovering, um, they look for Civil War relics. Did you know that people in that day took and put things in creek beds like their valuables and their um, <laughs> rifles and things of that nature? I didn't know that. And guess what, guys? People are finding them today. That's pretty, that's pretty amazing to me. Um, there was another thought uh, that I found out. In Plano, Texas, archaeologists discovered dinosaur skeletons and something else that was very important. Next to the dinosaur bones, they found dinosaur prints set in mud. It was a cast with man's footprint inside of the center of it. Hmm, right? The, this simply means rather than dinosaurs predating man, they obviously existed in the same time period, right? So what does that do? That blows Darwin's theory all out of the water. Amen? We know that in Egypt, since the discovery of the first pyramid, treasure hunters have dug and searched for the body and pharaohs all, all the same. Some of them have uncovered treasures that were great monetary wealth. But we know nowadays that the archaeologists that are working, they work with the Egyptian government to um, dig and preserve the discoveries as a national historic treasure. We learn many things and uncover a lot of things previous generations and other civilizations through archaeology. But guys, there's one thing that's important that we are going to find out today. That there are more valuable things than Indian arrowheads, dinosaurs, and mummies found in tombs all put together. And that is when we unearth as Christians digging in the Word of God. Because God's Word has the power to bring the dead to life, power to give hope to the hopeless, and to change the world. For this, we're going to look in the book of Proverbs, you know, which means a wise saying. It was written primarily by a man given the gift of wisdom from God. And if, as to coin the phrase Danny says, if you read the book, then you know that it was Solomon. He has a few words to say about the subject, and this morning we will just look at one verse. Is that not cool? One verse is all we'll look at today. If you will, open your Bibles to Proverbs 23 and go to verse 23. It says this, and I'm going to use the last part of it so you'll hear it. Buy the truth and sell it not. Buy wisdom, buy instruction, buy understanding. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for the opportunity. Father, we pray that you will just be here with us, Lord. That you will help us to see things that we've never seen before. And possibly lay hold of something that we can apply to our hearts and our lives today. God, may we share what we hear. And may it be a blessing to others. But more than anything, just as Jerry was saying, may it glorify you. May it exalt you. May you gain all glory and honor for these next few moments, Lord. We love you and we thank you supremely, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Now the first part of it says what? By the truth. What does that mean? I thought it was pretty interesting. Does it, sure, it surely doesn't mean that we're talking about buying it with money, right? Nah. <laughs> what if it, it means searching to uncover the truth and embrace it when you find it? 
Possess it. Lay hold to it. Claim it to yourself. Say, this is mine, Lord. This is for me. Someone pointed out that our generation is largely biblically illiterate. Do you believe that today? Mm-hmm. Amen or oh my. I know. She, she said, yeah. Though that, that, that may be true, quite frankly, there's no reason for it. Do you agree? I mean, hey, we've got all things at our fingertips. There's no shortage of Bibles. <laughs> there's no law against us owning a Bible or reading it. As there is no, you know, there's other places in the world that you can't even have a single page, let alone a whole Bible. And as far as I know, every American-born Christian, they can read. Every American-born person can read. There's no reason why we can't. And those that can't read, for whatever case in principle, whether they be impaired or what have you, we have DVDs. We have computers. I mean, gee whiz, I'm always saying, you want to know something? Hold on a minute, and I'll get my phone out, and I'll Google it. Now, I know a lot of people say you shouldn't be doing that, but hey, it helps me. I, I go on a discovery, and I search, and I, and I learn. And so should others. The availability isn't the problem, guys. The biggest problem with American Christians is that we have had so much available to us that we don't appreciate it. I know uh, if Dale was here, he would say amen because he says, we do, we have, we, there is no shortage of, of uh, Bibles, commentaries, I mean, all sorts of things that we have, but we don't appreciate it. And this is a truism that people often don't appreciate what they have until, guess what, they lose it. How many times have we heard that? You might be wondering, could America ever lose their own right to the Bible? Yeah? Amen? You ever thought that? I mean, even some here today might be old enough to know some of the things that have taken place. I mean, did you ever think that you would uh, lose the right to have the Bible and pray in school? We did. What about to have the right to be able to pray, it, it become illegal to have a prayer before football games or baseball games. It did. <laughs> and even, what about, would you ever guess the day that the Ten Commandments would be taken out of the county courthouse? It happened. There's something that we need to take and pay attention to here. We need to get back to the blessed old Bible and start realizing what privileges that we do have because they can be stripped away. There are people in the other worlds that would just give their eye teeth for just a page of the Bible. May Maybury G. Fellers is a, a dear sweet lady that has long since gone to be with the Lord. And um, she would tell us a story. She's gone mission trips to South Africa and to different places. But she was telling us a story about going to South Africa and taking Bibles that she wanted to go and give to the people there. And the miracle one is them trying to figure out how to get those Bibles out of customs at the airport. But, buddy, when they did, they went down to the marketplace and they started you know, giving them out. And this one man, she recounts to us, he was kissing the Bible. And he was just hugging the Bible. Have you ever done that? Just sit there and caress the Bible and looking at the pages and thinking, oh my God, how blessed I am. There was another man that quickly put his Bible in the basket so the authorities wouldn't take it from him. It's hard for us to imagine that, ain't it? But it could happen. American Christians, by large, have no concept of, of what the rest of the world is doing and what they're going through. And I pray, honestly, that we don't have to. God help us. The Psalms just wrote this. Thy word I have hidden in my heart that I will not sin against thee. That primarily benefit... Is telling us that we need to take and memorize the word. 
take it and put it to our heart, apply it to our life, so that if anything, God forbid, was to happen to our Bibles, we'd have it here. We wouldn't lose anything. Solomon wants us to realize it's very important to pursue the Word of God and to realize that it is God's desire that every Christian be firmly rooted in the Word. And for that reason, we look at the truth that will bring stability. See, the truth brings stability to Christians' lives so that we are not constantly going up and down, being tossed around by every doctrine that comes along our way. We will know it. See, the Word of God anchors our soul. Amen? Amen? Come on, guys. It's the truth. If you don't have the Word of God, what are you doing? How are you existing? You, you're going to be puny and weak. Come on, guys. I know it's not y'all. Because I know Danny. Danny preaches the Word. We see the truth that brings character. It builds character. And it builds us up. Character is another word of saying integrity. You know, the scripture tells us in James that if a man to know to do good and does not do it, it's sin. See, we understand that. It guides us. It shows us what we need to be doing. I mean, that Holy Spirit is a good one. Is he not? It tells you. It, it quickens in you when something's amiss. When something's not going right. Many who say they are Christians today are confused. Y'all don't look at me like that. I'm not, I'm not talking about y'all, but if I am, I'm sorry. I just want you to understand what's going on. Because a lot of times, in a lot of ways, we don't know how to give account. Okay? I'm not judging. It's not my job. All right? But I want you to understand this. The Bible, a lot of times we can't give an account because we don't read it. Amen or oh my. I mean, can I say something? Oh, Lord. And when I found this out, I got mad. And I got mad because I didn't know it. Have you ever said to somebody, Betty, the Lord done put more on you than what you're able to bear? Have you ever heard that? I challenge you to look it up in the Bible. It's not there. It's not there. I felt like a fool. Because I had said that many times to people. And it's not there. As a matter of fact, God didn't promise a rose, did not promise us a rose garden. He just told us that he would walk with us. Amen? I oh, know, that, that one was a zinger. I'm sorry, but that was the truth. That was, that was what happened to me, you know what I'm saying? And secondly, because many of them are dependent on others to tell them what they believe, they mix the world view with the Christian view and come up with something that doesn't fly in either one of the environments. We don't, you know, Christian world and the world. They don't, they just don't fly. They don't mix. They listen to some slick down so-called preacher that only cares about the donations to feed the lavish lifestyles, robbing them of all their, all their money, all their things that they have and do not feed them the truth and their spirit draws them, it, it, it just doesn't draw them close to the Savior and that's what we're supposed to do. As ministers and as Christians, our responsibility is to take the truth, the Word of God, and take and share it with others. And when we don't do that, we are forfeiting a benefit that not only blesses God and exalts Him and glorifies Him, but it also, it, it hurts us in the long run. Can I remind you what James said? If a man to know to do good and does not do it is sin. If we do not testify, if we do not share the Word of God, if we don't do what we're called to do, then we are just as much as fault as the sinner is. Amen or oh my. Oh, Lord, that hurts. I'm telling you, it hurt me. It hurt me. I have been going through something. Oh, Jesus. I have been going through a lot of stuff. Even today, this morning, at 2 o'clock this morning, the devil trying to rob me of my sleep to be able to come and preach this message. I believe it's so. Because, see... We don't tell the truth. Amen? 
We want to keep the numbers in the, in the house. And, and you want to tickle their ears. I'm telling you guys, we are blessed. We do not have that. We have one that will tell the truth. That's Danny. Danny Piner, even though it hurts at times, will give us the truth because that's his called responsibility as a child of the Most High God and an ordained minister. He brings the truth as God calls it. Amen? Yeah, y'all don't tell him that, by the way. <laughs> but others are not so fortunate, guys. They are under, undernourished because of, uh, they are dependent only upon a one-week experience. And if they're only getting something that's tickling their ears, then how are they absolutely getting anything? How are they feeding? It, it's good to have the emotionalism, right? No. I mean, I like to feel good, but it only lasts for a moment. You hear it, you're laughing, you're crying, and then the next thing you know, you walk outside these doors and something hits you like the wooly wally uh, Satan that he is. He'll smack you in the face with something in your life, and then your joy is gone. But see, if you know where your hope is, if you know whom you are fixed in, then by George, when the Satan comes and he starts messing with you, you say, I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus, get behind me. Use the word of truth that will stable you and anchor you to where you need to be. Amen? Oh, come on now. I'm, I'm going to preach it. I'm going to preach it, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you, the Apostle Paul, he told a young, a young pastor named Timothy, he says, preach the word. Be instant in season and out. Re reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. You can find that in 2 Timothy 4.2. Then he warned Timothy in 3 and 4, he says, for the time will come and they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ear from the truth and shall be turned unto false. Think about it. I, I was sitting there, oh, Danny did such a great job last week. And there was one thing that he resonated, that resonated with me, and that was Lot. I never really thought about it like this, though. You know, Lot, you know, Jesus, or Jesus was, we, we assumed that it was Jesus that was talking to Abraham. And when Abraham says, if I can find, you know, 50, 25, 10 righteous men in the city, will you spare the city? You know? I got to thinking, man, where was his where was his influence? I mean, he should have at least had his family with him. But as it was so, he only had his two daughters. He didn't have his wife because she looked back. And I thought to myself, God, what if it was required of me today? And they went and they said, Okay, we're gonna take Saudi Daisy out. You need to get your family and go. And I thought to myself, what if I was challenged with that same question? What if I can find just ten righteous? Will you spare the city? That's a hard thought. But I challenge you to think about that. Do you know your neighbors? Do you know who they are? Do you talk to them? Not just say, hey in passing or do you have some type of influence see Danny was even talking about where Lot was sitting at the gate he was prominent he was a man of influence because he was there you just can't go there with anything if you was a just a ordinary guy that's a thought what kind of price do you think it takes for the truth? Buy the truth. So what is the cost of attaining it? The answer is it'll cost you time. Time spent reading, studying, meditating, time going to church and listening and responding. 
The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Time in prayer, asking the Holy Spirit to illuminate your mind and your heart until you have a clear understanding and can aptly apply the word to your life. Time perhaps discussing the word with another Christian for clarity. You know, the Bible says, iron sharpens iron. I always love Sunday school. That's my funnest time because we get to talk about the word. And we get to see different mindsets and different ideas and, and world views and cultures. It's good stuff. And we understand. Why is the truth so important? John 8, 32, 31 and 32 says, then, Jesus, then said Jesus to the Jews, which believed him, If you abide continue in my word you are my disciples indeed and you shall know the truth and I bet you guys can say this with me and the truth shall what set you free our knowledge of the truth breaks away the bondage of his simple world this is a simple world we don't belong here guys we're just passing through this is not my home. You know, the Bible says that we are to be in the world, but set, uh, set away from the world. What does it say? It says not to be of the world, that we're supposed to be set aside, but we still have to exist. And that's where our influence comes from. That's where the anchor of the word comes from. It is up to us. Amen? Whew. <laughs> Our knowledge of the truth breaks away the bondage. Proverbs 29, 25 says this. The fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. The Proverbs writer says to buy the truth, and now I'll point out the next one sell it not in other words there's two things whatever you don't whatever you do don't let the truth go don't give in to seducing spirits and strange doctrine refuse to buy into the whatever's feel good philosophy of our day how many of us do that we don't do that here <laughs> nope but there are people that we know that do Amen? I mean, I talk to him a lot. <laughs> this was yesterday. One, someone I love dearly was sitting there drinking beer, and I asked him what it was he was drinking. What are you drinking? Because it was disguised. It was foreign to me. I didn't understand it. And I asked him, what are you drinking? What are you drinking? I mean, he was drinking like, like water. And I'm like, dude, what are you drinking? And then somebody says, it's beer. And I said, why are you doing that? And he says, because I'm 21 and I can do whatever I want. And I said, Bubba, that's not what I asked. And then I left it alone. People are out there doing whatever they want. But that doesn't mean that we are not supposed to do what we're supposed to do. Amen? Uh-huh. I heard an amen from a child. <laughs> Out of the mouths of babes. <laughs> Don't exchange the truth for anything, guys. Don't let it go. It's not always easy. And there again, the Lord didn't say it would be easy. He just said he'd walk with you. No matter what you go through. No matter who you talk to, no matter what situation, he says that he will be with us to the very end of the age. And he will give you the words when there seems to be no words. Or he will shut your mouth so you don't say nothing at all. You just merely stand. Amen? Number two, don't use the truth for your personal gain. We've heard that before. 
people get up here, not here, but they would get up at their pulpits and they would begin to speak the word of God and, and they would begin to convict people and tell them they need to do this and you need to give me a thousand dollars and okay, whatever. That's a path we don't need to go down. That's prosperity preaching. That's that name it and claim it stuff. There's a mandate, a creed, and a deception that will kill and rob and destroy. And woe to those false teachers that do that. We sit here, we stand here, we are here because of one thing and one thing only. And that's to glorify God. That's to worship God. And if we have a hidden agenda, I pray the Lord will open it up so that everybody can see it. Because that's a, that for shame. Woe is them that do that. Then the proverb says this. Buy wisdom. Seek it. Dig it. Go after it. Receive it. And use it. The Bible says in James 1.5. If anyone lacks wisdom, let them come and ask of God. Who gives it liberally and without reproach. And it will be given to him. Knowing the word of God but lacking the wisdom to apply it in our lives will not profit us. You can know the Bible backwards and forwards and say, I've read it for 20,000 years. Every year I read the Bible. But if you have not applied it with the wisdom that God gives us, it's just laying there, right? You know, we understand that when things happen and the, and the devil comes a-prowling, you take a mama. Can I talk to mamas a little bit? You take a mama that's praying over their child. Okay? I know for goodness you do not sit there and just say, I don't know what's going to happen. No, you don't. You take the word of God that tells you, Lord, you said in your word that you would watch over them. Lord, you said if I call upon the name of Jesus. Amen? You begin to proclaim the word of God of your children. Amen? You begin to pro proclaim the word of God over your family, over your situations, over your finances. You begin to proclaim the word. Walk in it. Be saturated in it. Come on, guys. Amen? Come on. How many of y'all done this? I, I knew you was going to raise your hand. My goodness. Ginger better. <laughs> She got a prayer. She is a prayer warrior. Many of y'all might not know that. Then again, you might. She is a prayer warrior. Wisdom gives us skill in administration. That is, tending to affairs of God's church. Our family, our finances, our job. Okay? Wisdom is exercising prudence in all religious matters being ethical. Then that leads me to the next one, by instruction. Instruction includes correction and discipline. Oof, that's a hard one, okay? A lot of people, you know, we have trouble with this one. I mean, how many of y'all, I don't like to be told what to do. My kids, oh man, my boy, my oldest one, he'll look at me, don't tell me what to do. I'm like, boy, you don't, boy, do you know who you're talking to? Tell me what to do. I'll tell you what to do until the day I die. All right? That's just the way it is. Told me one day not to pray for him, and I sat up and just started praying for him anyways. You know? Was that right? Maybe, maybe not. But nevertheless, everybody has somebody around them that says that. They don't like correction. They don't like discipline. Nobody likes to be told that their, their pet peeve or their pet sin is sinful. Amen? But see, the Holy Spirit and in instruction by the word of truth tells us it's sin. Amen? Oh, my. <laughs> okay. Meaning, too, in an adjective form, it means disciplining a person, being disciplined. This describes a life lived in the light of God's word. A disciplined life is life that has, uh, has purpose and meaning and follows godly principles and obeys obedience to God's word. A person who is disciplined in the word of God is a person of character, integrity, and God, godly influence. Which brings me 
to the final word in Proverbs 23, 23, buying understanding. Understanding is discernment. Understanding control the, the way we act and react. And guys, I have to say, I'm still learning that one. Sometimes I do really good and I can pat myself on the back and say, thank you, Jesus. But there are still some times I'm like, I do something wrong and I'm like, oh, God, did I really just say that? Did I really just do that? We all need help. Amen? We really do. The greatest thing is, is that we're receiving it. We're going after it. We're digging for it. Instead of just sitting there doing nothing, like bumps on the log. Amen? Understanding will confirm us in the image of God, which was God's intention and the gift to mankind in the garden. Wisdom, instruction, understanding are what makes the Word of God resonate in our hearts and our lives. And, guys... The Holy Spirit came to give us these things. The Bible says, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will guide you into all truth. It's the truth. He doesn't leave you. And how many of y'all know that God, the Holy Spirit is a perfect gentleman, and he will not leave you looking like a fool. He tries to help you in every way as much as you'll let him. I said that to myself. One of the most amazing things is this. It isn't a matter of intelligence or scholastic BAs, MAs, and PhDs. Everyone who seeks truth can obtain it far, it for, far enough to live a productive Christian life, to walk humbly with our God, to obey his word, and to honor him in all that we think and say and do. Amen? I'm going to close with this. Y'all did it. Y'all made it through. Yay. <laughs> so how many Bible <laughs> archaeologists do I have here to this morning? <laughs> have you been digging for the truth? Do you read and study your Bible? Do you cherish the truth? Do you embrace it and commit it to your heart? Have you asked the Holy Spirit to give you clarity as you read and study and pray for God's wisdom, instruction, and understanding? I hope we all do. But I'm going to say this. If you feel like you've been getting all you can and you want to ask God for more to help you to dig out more of the Word and the truth so that you can get a better handle on things, to gain more wisdom and instruction and understanding and applying it better to your own life, then I say to you today, the altar is ready. The Lord is here. All you have to do is ask. You know, I love to do things that are just so simple because I believe that, that the Lord was just as simple as that. I'm not going to bang you over the head and say, come on, I know you, you're a sinner. I'm not going to do that. It's crazy, you know. But what I am going to do is make it easy. If you want to come and talk to the Lord over here by yourself, nobody will bother you. We know we, we, know we want to pray for you, but we'll let, let you be there to pray, and you will be in our prayers this week. But if you come over here, then somebody will pray with you. And I know there are some prayer warriors in this, in this congregation that will do just that. And hey, you know, if maybe you feel a little weird about it, grab somebody that's sitting next to you. Say, come pray with me. There's no harm in that neither. But the thing that I'm saying, if the Lord has said anything to you during this message, then you need to respond to him. Because it does matter. Let's go ahead and stand and we'll pray. Father, we want to have a hunger and a thirst after you, Lord. Lord, we need you. We are amiss without you, Lord. God, we need you to help us to, Father, lead God and direct us in all truth. So that, Lord, when the enemy comes, we know, Father, that we know what to do. 
God, when we are confused or struggling with the situation, Lord, we know that you can help us through your word. Father, help us, we pray. We are a needy people. God, and we just want to honor you in everything that we do. Father, may I say it this way. We want to live our life with excellence. Father, to glorify you. Father, I pray for each one that's here in the, in the listening sound of my voice, God. Lord, I pray for each one. And whatever's going on in their life, Lord, don't let them sit or stand and go out like they come in. But let them lay it down before your feet, God. Lord, thank you. And I praise you and I give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen.